All right, folks, welcome back. We're back at it here doing section 9-6, which is the second to last section in chapter 9, and it's the last one that has to do with circles, and uh, really the last one that has to do with finding the area formulas for any given shape. Um, section 9-7 is just going to be about comparing similar um, figures and figures that share certain things in common, like maybe two uh, triangles have the same side length. Um, but different altitudes or something like that. Okay, so uh, this is really the last one where it's some really important formulas you're gonna have to memorize. There'll be formulas in sections nine seven, but these formulas will be about certain shapes. So we have next here section nine six areas of sectors and arc lengths. Okay, not to be confused with arc measures. We've studied arc measures so far, but we haven't studied arc lengths. But now that we've done circumference, we can do arc lengths. And if you can kind of picture what an arc length I'm talking about here, you can probably picture what a sector is. That's going to be uh, doing uh, a little bit more with the area formula of a circle and a parts of a circle. Sector is kind of like a part of a circle. You just got to figure out how it's defined. Okay, so let's do this one today. I think it'll be a good one. We'll bust through this hopefully relatively quickly and uh, get you onto your homework. Let's do this. All right, so here we have the definition. I would still recommend having your notebook out and continuing a notebook because if you write things down, you will remember them better. You will be able to explain what they are more effectively and you'll be able to connect things together. It's called kinesthetic learning um, by the actual act of just writing something down with a pencil and paper and seeing things. Um, it makes you better at explaining them later, right? Being able to write them down a lot faster. Also too, right, if you're writing down definitions, you might be noticing things within the definitions that you didn't notice when you were just reading it, okay? So once you get to a word and you get to that word and you don't really understand how that word would connect to the definition, then, um, then you can sort of dig a little deeper. And so it sort of gets you more involved. So I'd recommend rather than just watching this video, you're copying down all the definitions. Remember math isn't, it's kind of like a sport, right? Math is, uh, is not something that you just watch on TV. You don't just watch here. If you want to get good at a sport, you got to actually play the sport. You got to practice. Okay. So go ahead and write this down. Uh, this is the definition of a sector of a circle. A sector of a circle is a region bounded by two radii and the arc of the circle. Okay. So pretty obvious what the sector is here. We have a whole sector here. We have two radii and draw in any two. It could have been anywhere. We could have a big sector if we drew a radii here, but this is a relatively small sector here. This is a 60 degree sector. And this is the area. It's bounded by two radii and part of the circumference here called the arc, right? We've studied arcs in chapter seven. So this whole thing here is the sector itself. And you might be thinking, hey, I know what that looks like. I've seen this in real life. So again, radii come from the center of the circle. Um, where's another thing that, uh, that kind of you'd cut something out like this from a particular circle? Oh, well, you guessed it. Oops. That's right, a pizza. Okay, a pizza. So we can kind of think of a sector as kind of like just a pizza slice. Uh, it has a central angle right here, and so the, this arc would have a measure. And that central angle is pretty important because it's going to help us figure out the area of this particular um, slice of pie right here. So the bigger this ang central angle is, the bigger this arc is, the more area of this circle it's going to take up. Out of the 360 degrees of this circle, we could probably figure out how much area is taken up by this 60 degree sector. Okay, in addition to the measure of arc AB, we just talked about that, it measures 60 degrees. We're also gonna talk about arc length today. There is the length of AB. So this is a 60 degree arc within this uh, circle of a radius of five. So if we take this arc length and we laid it out straight, it would have a certain length. It would have a certain length. This, even though it measures 60 degrees, the size of the circle is totally gonna matter for how much arc length there's going to be, because this is just me eyeballing this here. In this particular circle with radius five, a 60 degree arc measure, if I laid this out straight, it's probably about that big. Say if we had a concentric circle here, much smaller, and I drew this in, this would also be a 60 degree arc here in this section. So this would be a much smaller sector that would have the same measure. The arc measure would be 60 degrees and 60 degrees here, but the arc length is much smaller than the arc length we had uh, in this larger, with the larger radius here. So if we took this and laid it on out, 
the arc length is much smaller because the radius is not as big. So we're gonna talk about arc length today. We're gonna to talk about areas of sectors. So for arc length, we're gonna use that circumference formula because the circumference of the actual circle that the arc is on, it matters. And the circumference of this circle is much bigger, so the arc length will be bigger. And with the area of a sector, certainly relies on how much area that circle has too. So here are the formulas. Without further ado, these are the ones you need to know. Let's write them down, let's write them down, let's write them down. In general, if the measure of arc AB, okay, so we could be talking about measure of arc AB. We could also be talking about it in terms of its central angle right here. I'm gonna mark this as theta. A lot of textbooks like to do this, uh, make that theta be the central angle right here. Um, so you can either talk about uh, lengths of arcs and areas of sectors by talking about it's the measure of the arc of the sector. Or you can talk about the measure of the central angle. Remember, theta would equal x degrees here because uh, the measure of arc is defined by the measure of the central angle. So here we have length of uh, arc AB, and that equals x over 360 times by 2 pi, or theta, right? Theta is the central angle, so I'll put theta there too. Um, so however big theta is, this looks like it's maybe about 120 degrees. This looks like it's about one third of the whole circle. So it would kind of make sense here and we see here, let me drop this in here. Let's talk about what's actually happening right here. So if we had this, say this were 120 degrees and we had 120 over 360, this would be telling us something. What this here, whenever we see a fraction, that a fraction is simply a ratio. This is the ratio of the degrees of the arc of the, of the sector or of the, the central angle to the degrees in the circle. We have 360 degrees total in the circle. So what you're doing here is you're just finding a ratio of the sector to the whole circle. How much of the circle is being taken up by that sector? Down here is a similar ratio. So this is for the area of sector AOB. No fancy notation or anything like that for sectors. You just say the three letters, right? The point on the circle followed by the center of the circle followed by the other point in the circle. This defines the sector, AOB and uh, what would be the minor sector is what you would actually shade, um, unless it's uh, specified as the major sector. So in this one here, same thing too, you'd have to do the same ratio. So when you do these problems, not much is gonna change from the last section, you're just getting a ratio. 120 degrees divided by 360, well that's one third of a circle. So you're basically saying one third of a circle is taken up by that sector. Degrees in the arc of sector, or degrees in the uh, central angle, and uh, two, right, set up a ratio, this over that, uh, to the degrees in the circle, 360 degrees. So then we've talked about this, this is a ratio, it kind of makes sense if we're trying to figure out information about this section, we gotta figure out what ratio of the whole 360 degrees, the whole circle, is being taken up. Um, these other parts, I think you guessed it, that one right here and that one right here. What do we see, two pi r, two pi r, what's that? Oh, that's circumference. Yes, you better believe that's the circumference formula, okay? So this is just one third of the circumference is taken up by this 120 degree sector. Um, or x over 360 uh, of the whole circumference is taken up by the arc, right? The length of this arc um, uh, for however many x degrees uh, the arc measures, the central angle measures. Down here, the area of this sector so if this is 120 degrees, this would be one third of the area of the whole circle. Just set up a ratio and X over 360 for however many degrees your arc measures here or your central angle measures here. Um, and whatever many degrees over 360 and then you just multiply that to the area of the whole circle it gives you the area of that sector and you're good to go. So without further ado, we can jump into some practice problems. I'm not gonna give you just a super straightforward problem right away, something that's a little bit harder. So take a look at this one. I'm not gonna say much. Just keep in mind the last slide and maybe some additional steps you'd have to do to figure out the area of the shaded region bounded by XY, chord XY, and arc uh, XY. So this is um, some more information here. If you have the radius of a circle and you know where an arc is within that circle, you can actually find this area. You can find the area bounded by the chord and the arc as long as you know the radius here because there's another shape. So without further ado, pause the video and uh, give this one a shot. Uh, I don't think you need any more help on this. As long as you think about it, as long as you use what you applied with the formulas in the last slide, you're going to get it.
Ready, set, go. Not sure where to begin, not sure where to begin. This is a sector. Right, sector Y, O, X. And this is also a triangle. This is a triangle. Get the area of the sector. Get the area of the triangle. You'll know what to do after that. The land's a far, far, bad, easy. And broadcast so raw and easy. Southern road, sunshine, work it out, 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 out. rolling the die. I would totally cause. Alright, let's review this. Let's do it together. Okay, I'm hoping you got this. If not, pay attention. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to get, and I'll do this in a light color. Maybe I'll do this in gray. What uh, we need to do to get the area of the shaded region that's bounded. So we have something that's bounded where we have a curve and we have a straight line here, right? We don't know how to get this area. There's no formula for it. So what we need to do is trade formulas, right? We need to use multiple formulas to, uh, and the area addition postulate to isolate this section of this sector, okay? So I'm definitely gonna use the area of a sector formula to figure out how much of the plane is occupied by this sector. So area of the sector is an important thing to get here. So let's do that. Let's get the area of the sector. Area is going to equal, this is a 90 degree angle. That's one fourth of the whole circle. So I can just use my formula if I want to. Might be easier right now just to follow that formula exactly so you don't make any mistakes right now. But you know this is one fourth of the whole circle because 90 degrees is, uh, is one fourth of uh, 360 degrees. Um, so we're going to get our area here. So we're going to use our area formula. So pi r squared and r is 10 squared. And all of a sudden I have 100 pi over 4. 90 over 360 is 1 fourth, so I'm just putting the 4 down there. And so our area is 25 pi. So I found the area of the sector. In order to get the area of the shaded region up here, I just need to subtract the area of this triangle, and I will do that now. This would be 1 half times 10 for base, 10 for height. So 1 half, 10 times 10, I'm just going to write the answer in, is 50. So this here, right here, is 50. The larger thing in gray was 25 pi. So to get our difference, we're going to take, to finally isolate our answer, we're going to get the area of the shaded, And that is how you should leave your answer. Leave it in terms of pi. There's no pi over here. Can't combine these. This is irrational. That is rational, so can't combine those through addition or subtraction. That's as simplified as your answer should be. You can do a quick double check in your heads to make sure your answer makes sense. 25 times pi, well, that'll be about 80 or so. Pi is about 3.14. Um, so this is about 80 minus 50. So it kind of makes sense that this would be about 30 units uh, squared. And this would be about, this is 50 units squared here, square units here. So it kind of makes sense uh, that this is just slightly smaller than the triangle. And hopefully got that. All right, try this one out here too. These are just classroom exercises. These should be pretty quick. This is just making sure you know how to use the formula before you start the homeworks uh, tonight. Um, give it a shot, classroom exercises one through five. Ready, set, a go.
Okay, and here we have our answer. So let's just review this right here. Um, I kind of did these ones all in my head. Hopefully I did them correctly. I can talk through them real quick. So uh, just in case you didn't get what I got. Arc length here. Uh, so we're talking about this length. If our radius here is one, so we're looking at a unit circle right here. We know now that the unit circle is two pi r or just two pi for circumference, and this is one fourth of that. So we're gonna take two pi divided by, two, uh, by four, and that would simplify to pi over two. So I'm pretty confident that this one is correct. Again, you can use the formula, 90 over 360 is one fourth, and multiply it by two pi r, and then it would just be two pi times one would give you two pi, hopefully got that. Okay, um, this one here, I got four pi for this answer. Uh, this is 120 degree uh, arc. Um, measure of that arc is 120 degrees, so that's one third of the circle. So this would be one third times by two pi r would be 12 pi. So one third of 12 pi is four pi. 12 pi divided by three is four pi. So I'm pretty confident on that. This one here, four, uh, radius is four, 45 degree angle, 45 degrees is one eighth of a whole circle. And then you're gonna multiply that by two pi r, so that's eight pi. And uh, yeah, eight pi divided by eight would be pi. I'm confident about this one too. Uh, for the length of this would have to be pi. The length of this would have to be four pi. Um, and finally, let's see if this arc length is two pi. Um, two pi r, so I'm gonna just start with the, the whole circumference, right? Two pi r would mean that the whole circumference is eight pi, right? Two times four is eight, and then you're just left with pi. So the whole circumference is eight pi. Totally makes sense that one fourth of this uh, circle because this would be a 90 degree central angle if this whole thing is the major arc is 270 that leaves 90 degrees remaining um, so 90 over 360 is one fourth and then we'll take one fourth of 8 pi and that would be 2 pi okay confident on that one let's check out areas here so again one fourth of the unit circle well the unit circle's area is just pi so pi over 4 I feel good about that um, 12 pi for this area here so 120 degrees is one third of the whole so 36 pi, right, would be the area of the whole circle, and then one third of that would be 12 pi. I agree with what I had said earlier here. And um, this is one eighth of the circle. Again, 45 divided by 360 is one eighth, and then multiply it by the area, which is 16th, which is 16, and then you'd be left with two pi. I agree with the area there. And finally, let's double check my answer here. Um, the whole area of this, if the radius is four, pi r squared would be 16 pi. And we have one fourth of that would be four pi. And I'm good, I, I agree with my answers here. Uh, let's check my work down here. So I didn't show much work. Uh, these can be tricky. I've noticed in the past these are tricky problems. So I tried to draw a sketch out, very ugly sketch, but this was my center of a circle, radius here, radius here. Um, so radius, let's call it OA here, radius OB here. And AB is your core. So if you can get the area of this whole sector, AOB, and subtract the area of equilateral triangle AOB, then you're going to get the area of the shaded region, the region that's bounded by chord AB and the arc of chord AB. So this is just through subtraction, we're able to get this uh, funky little area here where we have a curve and we have a straight boundary. And we're going to do that by area of sector minus area of triangle. Okay, so let's double check I got the area of the sector correct. Well, this whole circle's area would be pi r squared, so pi times 6 squared is 36 pi, and 60 degrees is 1 sixth of 360, right? 60 over 360 would simplify to 1 sixth. So you're going to take the 36 uh, uh, pi for the, the area and multiply by 1 sixth, you would get 6 pi as the area of the sector. I'm going to think that's probably right. Lastly here, this might have been a uh, tricky one for you guys to remember to do. Hey, you got that formula here for the area of an equilateral triangle, 
that can make your life a lot easier and you can go a lot faster. So watch a few videos ago when we re-talked about the proof of this in case you forget it. But the area of an equilateral triangle is S squared root three divided by four. And the reason why we can do that is that the base of an equilateral triangle, that's just gonna be S, right? It's gonna be six, but the height of this we can write in terms of S because this is this, if we dropped an, the, an altitude here to get the height of this equilateral triangle, it would be 30, 60, 90 degree uh, triangle. So if the bottom is S and this side would be S, this would actually be a half of S and then the altitude would be a half S times root three. So this uh, is kind of how, if you follow the steps, you would get to this as the formula for the area of an equilateral triangle. Upside down triangle there. <laughs> okay, so let's double check I did this correctly here. Our S in this situation would be six. That's the one of the side lengths of the equilateral triangle. So six squared is 36. So 36 root three divided by four. Well, 36 divided by four is nine. So that gives us nine root three for the area of the triangle. And so I'm gonna certify this one. This one looks good to go to me. I can also double check in my calculator because I did it a little bit earlier, but I could just double check here if you're on a test and want to make sure you do this correctly, just check to make sure your answer makes sense. So I did the uh, square root of three is about 1.73, and I'm going to multiply that by nine, and I see that nine root three is about 15.6. And that makes sense because six pi is probably around 19 or so, 20 or so, because pi is 3.14. So that would mean this little area right here, the region that's bounded by uh, chord AB and arc AB, um, is gonna be around, I don't know, three or four or so. Um, so not very big at all. So my answer makes sense. I think I got it right. I'm not even gonna check the textbook. There's your homework. So hopefully um, things went smoothly today in the lesson. Feel free to email me with any questions and we'll review this one tomorrow on Zoom. Wait a second. I forgot about our new feature. We have a new feature of lessons called homework pre-explained. It's pre-explained here, okay? So we're looking at a homework problem that's gonna come up for you on uh, number 24. The homework is a bit long tonight. It gets a bit harder towards the end. So I'm hoping to explain this problem to make things go a little bit easier for you and uh, to make, usually uh, the homework review after this section is pretty rough. Like when we come in the next day, review homework is pretty tough. So hopefully you can figure out how to do this problem and that's gonna help you a lot on the later problems, problems 26, 28. Uh, 25, other stuff like that. So this is sort of the introduction to some harder problems that come up at the end. Okay, so ABCD is a square with sides eight centimeters long. Two circles, each with radius eight centimeters are drawn, one with center at A and the other with center at C. Find the area of the region inside both circles. So what I'm hoping you do if you got this problem in the textbook, absolutely, the first thing, draw it out. We have here a square, ABCD, the sides are well, eight centimeters long, and then those two circles will each have radius of eight centimeters long. And one's gonna be centered on A, and another one's gonna be centered on C. So what we're gonna know here is that the radius of this circle, circle C, is gonna be the same as the side length. So D is gonna be on circle C. B is also going to be on circle C because it's uh, this would also be a radius of circle C, CB. So let's see what this whole thing looks like. So the side length here is eight. Uh, a also too is gonna be a circle with a radius of uh, eight. So circle A has a radius of eight. So that means D is also on circle A and B is also on circle A. So this is what uh, this would look like here for the first circle. Introducing the second circle, the one centered at C, it would look like this. So you're gonna have problems kind of like this, which may look kind of scary here, um, uh, where you're gonna have to get regions of two overlapping circles. So in all problems like this, when you see this, I kind of call it like uh, the lips. You actually wanna draw in the lips. Actually, step one before you even go through, draw in the lips, make these into lips here. <laughs> um, it looks like a flower petal. Actually, it's probably what I should, should have said earlier. It looks like a flower petal. This whole thing here kind of looks like a flower petal. And when you see a flower petal like this, you can get the area of a flower petal if you know the areas of the circles that are overlapping to form this flower petal. So what you're finding here, find the area of the region inside both circles. Well, this here is inside of both circles, okay? And the lower part of the lips here is also inside of both circles. So maybe you have some guesses on how to do this. If so, try to give this one a shot right now. If not, I'm gonna walk you through it. Um, but 
you need to really solve for two different things right here. Because we have um, in both these circles, and I'm trying to outline, I think I, I saw this one earlier within the context of triangle BCD. Okay, so C is the center of this circle right here. So if it's the center of the circle, we've defined a sector. Okay, there is a sector here, DCB, which would be this whole thing right here, okay, including the part that's in both of the, um, of the circles. Um, and then one that's just, so down here is just uh, in uh, this circle, it's not in this other circle. The first thing you would solve for to get this would actually be this region right here. Half of the region that's in both of the circles, so this right here. So I wanna shade this, I'm gonna shade a little more deeply so hopefully you see it. So if I shade this here, you know how to solve this because DB is a chord. It's not just a diagonal of this square here. It's a chord of circle C, of circle C. So here, this is a chord of circle C, and this arc DB, minor arc DB right here, is the arc of the chord, the arc of the chord. So what uh, you do here, and I got actually the answer already written down here, but the way you would solve for this here is, one, step one, you'd have to find the area of sector. And I want to put sectors plural. Oh, no, I won't do that. I'll just put sector, okay? Sector, we'll just focus on DCB. And that would equal, well, we have a central angle that's 90 degrees, so that would be 90 over 360 times by pi r squared. And r is 8, so we would just do 8 squared pi times by 8 squared. So this would be 64 pi, and then we would take 1 fourth of that, because 90 over 160 is uh, 1 fourth. So 64 pi divided by 4 would equal 16 pi. So this is the area of the whole sector, right, which would include everything else down here, right, everything else. This is the whole sector from here to here. Uh, to get the region that's bounded above the chord, right, above chord DB, you would just have to subtract the area of this triangle, which I've already done, I already have shown here. So this triangle here, remember this is 8 down here too. 8 and it was a 90 degree angle because it's a square. Eight times eight is 64, divided by two is 32. So minus 32 would give you the area of one of the shaded regions. And they're gonna be two. So up here, and I'll do this in one final color, pen color, uh, I might do it in green. Again, this here, this top of the lips would just be, right, top of the lips here would just be 16 pi minus 32. But that represents only half of what's in both circles because also down here you'd have to repeat this process to get the bottom of the lips down here so um the part that's bounded between arc db and would be the arc of this circle um would also be db here um to solve for that you'd have to follow the identical process or what you could just do which i've shown down here the area region side both circles top of the lips bottom of the lips um, it's just they're both identical to one another, so you just double what you got before. So here's the final answer to the question right here, 32 pi minus 64, minus 64. And that makes sense as an answer because 32 pi is around 100 and then subtracting 34 kind of makes sense that, uh, that that would be a reasonable answer. A few more problems like that and uh, these ones here, you gotta work to set up sketches uh, to help make sense of uh, where the circles might be and how you can get the areas of the sectors and then subtract the areas of the triangles you guys find. So you gotta be creative on problems like this. Best of luck and uh, enjoy. We'll review this tomorrow on the Zoom call.